Last time, our topic of the day was non-determinism. We introduced this new idea for how we could talk about finite state automata, where we essentially just relaxed what we could do with them. And this idea of non-determinism, this is going to come up again when we talk about Turing machines. We're going to be talking about non-determinism all over again. So it's important to learn this for that reason. Also, when we're talking about finite state automata, these non-deterministic versions, these are actually the most useful finite state automata. So far, we've been discussing this idea that regular expressions and finite state automata are, are kind of equivalent as models of computing. Anything I could do with one, I could do with, with another. And in particular, my goal here is to show how I can convert any regular expression into a finite state automaton for that same language. When we do this in sort of the most naive way, as we start showing how we can do this transformation from regular expressions to finite state automata, what we're going to end up with is going to be a non-deterministic finite state automaton. It's easiest to take a regular expression and convert it into a non-deterministic automaton because of that relationship, since regular expressions and non-deterministic automata are sort of more closely related to one another. The non-deterministic ones are the ones that people typically use. To sort of show you what progress we've made so far with this proof to show that finite state automata are regular expressions, our goal has basically been to show how I could convert a regular expression, any regular expression, into a finite state automaton. That's been our goal so far. Our strategy for doing this has been to, first of all, recognize that these operations, so epsilon, literal characters, unions, concatenations, and Kleene star, those operations gave us the rules for how to build a regular expression. So that's how we defined a regular expression is just anything we can do with these rules. What we've been doing so far is we've been using this idea that computability by a finite state automaton is going to be closed under all of those same operations. So all those things we can do to build a finite state automaton are things that we can sort of do to finite state automata. So that if we show that we can do each of these things to a finite state automaton, then since these were rules for how to build a regular expression, we could take those same rules to build a finite state automaton for the same language. So far, we've already shown that we can do the empty string as a finite state automaton. We can do a literal as a finite state automaton. And last class, we showed that we could do union as a finite state automaton as well. The things that we have left to do are concatenation and then also the Kleene star. Last class, we started talking about these finite state automata that we called non-deterministic finite state automata. And basically, the whole idea of discussing non-determinism is that it's going to make this demonstration of closure much easier. So we were able to do sort of these first two without a huge amount of difficulty, at least, staying with deterministic finite state automata. If we instead relax ourselves so that we have non-deterministic finite state automata, concatenation and star are going to be massively easier. So we're going to stick to non-determinism for those. A non-deterministic machine, though, is equivalent in power to a deterministic one. We haven't shown that yet, but that is the case, that a non-deterministic machine has equivalent computing power to a deterministic machine. So if I can show that I can convert any regular expression to a non-deterministic machine, I could convert that non-deterministic machine into a deterministic one if I really needed to or wanted to. So this is kind of like this idea that we showed NAND circuits were equal to and or not circuits which were equal to and or not straight line. And then we could conclude that NAND circuits are therefore equivalent to and or not straight line. Since A is equivalent to B, which is equivalent to C, and equivalence is transitive, we can conclude that the first one and the third one are equivalent as well. We're doing a similar thing here. I'm going to show that I can convert regular expressions to non-deterministic finite state automata, which can be converted into deterministic finite state automata. So they're all equivalent. So just as a reminder, these are our pieces of a regular expression, and we've already shown that these can become a finite state automata. In particular, we showed that they could become a DFA. So that's where we're at so far. So we've yet to do concatenation in Kleene star. So as a reminder of what we meant by non-determinism. So by non-determinism, we had some sort of relaxation for what our automata could do. 
where with deterministic finite state automata, we said we had to be in exactly one state at a time. And from each state, we could have exactly one transition per character for that state. With our non-deterministic finite state automata, we can be in any number of states at a time that we would like. So we could be in zero of them or all of them or any combination in between. I'm allowed to have multiple or zero transitions matching on a certain character for some state. I'm also going to allow you to make transitions that don't consume characters. So you can just say, you can jump from this state to that state without using any characters from your input. And the idea was essentially that if I was trying to figure out, can I get to my friend's house? Or is there some path through, the, through these roads to get me from here to my friend's house? And I came to some fork in the road and I didn't know which way to go. The non-deterministic approach is to say, let's take both of them. So we can sort of split the universe in two, where in one universe I go left, and in the other universe I go right, and then maybe once I find my friend's house, I just pick that's the universe that I wanted to be in. So that's sort of how non-determinism works intuitively. And we gave not quite this example, but something very much like this example in class last time of a non-deterministic machine. So this machine will return one, for all of the strings such that their second to last character is a one. We're just going to do a sample execution through this automaton so you can sort of see exactly what's going on with it. So the string that I'm going to do is 11010 is what we're going to do. So I'm going to do a sample execution with this string so that we can sort of see how these automata work more precisely. So to start with, before I use any characters from the input, I'm going to start out in some set of states. Non-deterministic finite state automata, they're not in a state, they're in a set of states instead. What is the set of states that I'm in before I read any characters for my input? Yeah, I'm just in the start state. So the only state that I'm in is the start state. So we always start out in the start state. If we had transitions from the start state that didn't require me to read any of the input, I would be in those as well. This machine does not have any such transitions. So we don't do that. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to read that one. The first character in my input, that is a one. So I'm going to transition on a one to some new set of states. So what's going to happen is we know that we're in the start state. And one of the things that the start state transitions to, we can get to by sort of following that self loop. So that self loop matches on a one. So from the start state, we also transition into the start state on a one. Additionally, the start state transitioned on a one to the state one. So I'm just going to represent that with an O, let's say. So now, after we've read that one character of one, we're in both start as well as the middle state there. So then the next thing we're going to do, I'm going to read another one. So when we read that second one, well, the start state transitions to the start state on a one. And then the start state also transitions to state one on a one. And then state one on a one transitions to next. So I go from the set of states, start one, and go to start one next when I see a one as input. So then the next thing we're going to do is we're going to receive a zero as input. So on a zero, the start state goes to the start state on a zero. On a zero, though, the start state does not go to state one. That did not match. So the start state does not go to state one. State one on a zero goes to next. So state one is going to go to next. Next, though, on a zero doesn't have any transitions that matches. So sort of this next state doesn't transition anywhere. So there is just no continuation of that path on a zero. So the next state does not go anywhere. So now we're in the state S with N. And then uh, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to transition on a 1. So S is going to go to state S on a 1, as well as state O on a 1. N has no transitions on a 1, so it doesn't go anywhere. So now we're just in S O. If we were to stop here, so if we didn't have that 0 as our last character, if we stopped there, would we return 1 or would we return 0? Zero. Why? You can answer that. Why? Right. So, so our rule for when we return zero is we return zero if any of the states we're currently in are zero. So the start state, that's not a final state. 
one is not a final state. So none of the states we're currently in are final states. So therefore we return zero. We do have one more character though, actually. So that is that zero. So on a zero, the start state transitions to the start state. State one transitions to the next state. So start transitions to start, one transitions to next. So now we're in start and next. So now we've read our last character. Uh, do we return one or do we return zero? One, why one? Right, because this one was a final state. So therefore we return one. Since among the states that we were in, one of them was a final state, we return one. So we return one for this string. It's second to last character is a one. That's what we hoped for. So this is basically our definition for a non-deterministic finite state automaton. So like with our deterministic one, we write one down by giving some finite number of states, one of which is a start state, and some of those are final. So that's exactly the same thing that we had for the deterministic automata. The main difference is going to be what transitions look like and how we determine what to return for these automata. So those are going to be the main differences with the deterministic automata. So our transitions before were just going to be some function that uh, mapped uh, state character pairs to some state. So you took a state, you took a character, and then you had one state that was your next thing. In this case, instead of having just a function that maps states and characters to single states, we're going to have a function that is perhaps a partial function. So we're allowed to say some state character pairs don't have any transitions. That's what that means to be a partial function. So we're going to have a function that might be partial. There are some inputs for which we won't have outputs. That's going to map pairs of states with characters or epsilon for empty, for those empty transitions. So that is transitions that don't consume input. The output of that function is going to be a set of states. So you can go into multiple states instead. So it's a function mapping states paired with characters or epsilon to a set of states instead. So with this in mind, what our execution rule looks like is we're going to first begin in our start state, in our initial state. And then we're going to enter every single state that I can reach without consuming input from that start state. So if I had my start state, and then I had some transition that didn't use any input to my next state, then once I entered this start state, I would also be in the next state, because I didn't need any input to get there. So we begin in the start state. We're also in every state that I can reach without consuming input. And then just like before, we're going to read our input one character at a time without being able to look back. And we're going to transition into new states, plural potentially, once per character, based on which states, plural, I am currently in and which character I see. And then once I transition to new states, I'm also going to transition into states reachable without consuming input. And then I return true if any state I end in is final state and return false if every state I end in is non-final, is the definition here. So basically the main difference is that I can have multiple outgoing transitions per input. So what I do is I just take all transitions for all states I'm currently in, and then I just sort of spread out to all the states I can get to without consuming input from there. And I repeat that over and over and over again. 